So, I hear you want to type like a pro. Let's start by setting up your finger positioning. Look at the F and J keys on your keyboard. Do you see the bumps on each key? Close your eyes and feel for the bumps using your two index fingers. Take your time, but don't look. Did you get it? Your index fingers should always find their way back to F and J by feeling for those bumps. Now curve your fingers and bring your other fingers down on the next three keys on either side. This is called the home row position. For example, to type the letter U, your right index finger will travel up one key and then quickly return to the bump on the J key. Okay, before we start, there is only one rule you must always follow. Never, ever look at the keyboard while typing. If you follow this rule, your index fingers will quickly learn to find their way home by feeling for the bumps. Fast typists forget about the keyboard and don't even realize their fingers are at work. They feel one with the computer. After some practice, you'll start feeling it too. The computer becomes a part of your body and your mind is in full control. Let's get started. Having a home is important, wouldn't you say? It's where we go to rest, start our day, and even begin our travels. Did you know that when typing, your fingers also have a home on your keyboard? It's called the home row. The home row is made up of eight special keys. It starts with A, S, D, and F, jumps over G and H, and keeps going with J, K, L, and stops at semicolon. It's called the home row because it is where your fingers should feel at home when typing. From the home row, all other keys are just a short distance away. As you practice, you will build speed because you hardly have to move your fingers from one key to the next. You see, hunting and pecking at letters makes it harder to concentrate when you type. You also type slower and build the wrong muscle memory. The home row is awesome because it helps you know where to place your hands even without looking at the keyboard. Look, these are the F and J keys. Take both of your index fingers and feel for the bumps on these two keys. You can even do this without looking at the keyboard. Now curve your hands like bear paws and bring your fingers down on the next three keys on either side. When you do this, the letter G and H keys should be open without any fingers on them. Placing your fingers on the home row will help you learn to type faster and build the correct muscle memory. Now try doing it with your eyes closed. Anytime you find your fingers traveling around the keyboard while you type, Remember to feel for those bumps on F and J and bring your fingers back to home sweet home. Ever notice how typing and sitting go hand in hand? Most of us spend a few minutes to a few hours each day in front of the computer. Some of us, well, quite a bit more. In fact, the average American spends eight and a half hours in front of the computer every day. Because we spend so much time sitting behind a computer, we need to keep our posture in mind. Posture is the way we hold our body when performing an activity. While activities like running or swimming might be the first to come to mind, sitting is also an activity. Bad posture when sitting can be harmful. It leads to headaches, sore backs and muscles, and even pain after you stand up and leave your computer. And that's just after one day. If you keep the same bad posture for years, you can get seriously hurt and might even need surgery. Good posture, on the other hand, helps improve our concentration, letting us work longer and harder. It also prevents sore muscles, leading us to feel happier and healthier, both at and away from the computer. Now that we're all sitting, let's practice good posture together. Are you ready? Okay. Pretend you're at a fancy restaurant. Sit straight, don't slouch or slump. Look straight ahead. Make sure your eyes look directly into your monitor, the same way you would look at someone across the table from you. You don't want to have to point your head up or down. Adjust the height of your seat or your screen if you need to. If your feet don't reach the ground, make sure to use a footrest. Don't rest your forearms on the desk or armrests. Your wrists should hover just above the keyboard without touching it. Keep those elbows at right angles in the shape of an L. Now you're ready to work. These tips are good to keep in mind, whether you use a desktop, laptop, or even a tablet. Remember to check your posture every 15 minutes. If you notice you are slouching or slumping, take a moment to fix your posture. Your body will thank you. Taking a short break every hour also helps. In case you ever forget, try to remember this. Sit straight, be healthy. Did you know each of us has a superpower? It's called muscle memory. It might not sound as cool as flying like Superman or having x-ray vision, but it is sort of superpower. 
You see, our muscles have an amazing way of letting our bodies do difficult work. For example, when you walk, you don't think about raising one leg after the other and then putting them back down. You just do it. That's because muscle memory takes care of those details, letting our minds focus on exactly how to get where we are going. Same thing when we eat. You don't think about feeding your face, chewing and swallowing. You just do it. Imagine how cool it would be if you could use muscle memory to help when typing. I'll let you in on the secret. You can. Just like a basketball player trains his muscles to focus on his game, you can train your muscles to type without much thinking about it. This allows your mind to focus on other tasks, such as completing your homework on time. Like all new things, you'll make mistakes at first, but you'll get better. After a while, muscle memory kicks in, and there is no telling how high you can fly. Because if you look at your keyboard searching for each letter, you'll build the wrong muscle memory, and your typing will be really, really slow. So just let your hands do the typing, and let your mind focus on what it is supposed to be doing. Thinking. Not a bad superpower to have, wouldn't you say? The best news is, the more you practice, the easier it will get. Which one do you think came first? The keyboard or the computer? The answer may surprise you. The keyboard beat personal computers by a whopping 100 years. The first personal computer was created about 40 years ago, but the keyboard has been around for even 100 years longer. The first QWERTY keyboard was designed by a clever newspaper editor from Milwaukee named Christopher Latham Scholes as part of the first typewriter in 1867. That is just two years after the end of the Civil War. A weapons manufacturer named E. Remington & Sons was looking for new ways to make money after the war. They purchased the first typewriter and began selling it a few years later. The QWERTY keyboard was born. The name QWERTY comes from the placement of the first six keys on the keyboard. Have you ever wondered why the order of the keys is not alphabetical? It really looks like a mess, as if someone jumbled them together just to make it harder to find each key. In fact, the QWERTY layout was very carefully designed to prevent the mechanical parts from jamming together. You see, typewriters, unlike modern keyboards, use large mechanical parts to press ink down on paper. If someone pressed down keys that were next to each other on the typewriter, the parts would sometimes get jammed. Jamming is no longer an issue today because modern devices do not have the same clunky mechanical parts. More recently, some inventors have designed new clever layouts, such as Dvorak and Colmac, that claim to make your hands do less work. Yet, QWERTY remains the most popular keyboard layout in English-speaking countries. Isn't it interesting how a solution to a mechanical problem from 140 years ago determines how we use technology today? Have you ever heard the saying, too much of a good thing is a bad thing? Okay, let's take ice cream for example. We probably all agree it's great. But if you only eat ice cream for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you'll get sick, which is not so great. With most things in life, the key to being healthy and happy is moderation. That is, enjoy a little bit at a time. The same holds true for computers. We spend so much time in front of screens that we need to learn to take care of ourselves, or we could get sick. For example, did you know that blinking is a natural way for our body to protect our eyes? We do it 15 to 20 times per minute without even thinking about it. But when we stare at a screen, we tend to blink just four or five times per minute. That's bad for the eyes because they can get dry. Other body parts can also suffer from sitting in front of a screen for too long. Your hands and wrists will ache from typing. Your back and neck will become sore. Even your butt will start to hurt. Worst of all, your mind will feel like it's stuck in the mud. Now here's a quick recipe for staying healthy. Take a break every 15 minutes to give your eyes and body a rest. Get out of your chair. Maybe even take a short walk. If you have a window in the room, take a look outside. Now stretch your back, neck, and arms and reach for the sky. No, higher. That's better. Because sitting at a computer is the exact opposite of exercise, you should take a more active break every hour or so. Step away from the computer for five minutes. Go for a brief walk around the house, talk to your parents and siblings, or just drink a glass of water. How about a few jumping jacks? When you get back to your computer after an active break, you will be more focused and your body will feel refreshed. Remember that all activities affect our bodies, not just sports, but also sitting in front of a screen, be it a TV, computer, or your smartphone. That's right, take a break, get active.
Stay healthy. Your body and mind will thank you, and you'll get more done. When it comes to conveying ideas, space is pretty important. Um, no, not that kind of space. I'm talking about something closer to home. I'm talking about the spaces we see in the pages of a book and on the screens of our computers. We take them for granted. But imagine this, 1,000 years ago, the English language didn't put spaces between its words. It made writing faster, but readers had to guess where each word began on the page. Talk about a headache. Fortunately, modern English uses more punctuation and is much easier to read. Spaces between words aren't the only spaces we see when reading. Have you ever noticed a big space before the first word in a paragraph? We call this big space an indent. Just as spaces help our eyes see where each word begins, indents tell readers where each new paragraph begins. When writing, regular spaces can be added by hitting the space bar. While it might seem like indents are created by hitting the space bar several times, it's not a good idea. You might put three spaces at the start of one paragraph and five at the start of another. This will make your page look crooked. Or worse, your computer might think you made a mistake and get rid of the spaces. That means no more indent. Instead, indents are added by hitting the tab key. One press and your cursor leaps way over there, pushing the text with it. These spaces are always the same size, keeping your indents nice and even. But that's not the only thing the tab key does. You can also press it to move from one box to another when filling out forms on the internet. You might have noticed that the tab key is a smaller key than the space bar. The space bar is big and easy to reach because you will use it more than the tab key not because of the sizes of the spaces they each make. So remember, even though we'll often add one small space when writing, we'll still sometimes find ourselves needing one giant tab. Typing fast is awesome. It lets you send more messages to friends, complete that email to grandma earlier, and take less time to finish homework. Did you know some people type fast for a living? They're called typists. They work in courtrooms take notes at business meetings, and even write closed captioning for television. They type as fast as people talk, which is about 110 words per minute. The world's very first typist was a woman in the 1870s named Lillian Scholes, who just so happened to be the daughter of Christopher Scholes, the man who invented the QWERTY keyboard. Since she was the first, her typing speed wasn't the fastest. She tended to seek and find, which probably means she looked at her keyboard and pecked the keys. But some type faster. In 1918, Margaret Owen reached 170 words per minute. That's a page in a minute and a half. Then in 1946, Stella Pajunas reached 216 words per minute, but only for a single minute. The world's true record holder is Barbara Blackburn. Though she only reached 212 words per minute, she could keep typing at over 150 words per minute for 50 minutes straight. Wow, that's 9,000 words or 36 pages without taking a break. At that rate, she could type a novel a day. There are people that can type even faster, hitting as much as 360 words per minute using a special type of keyboard called stenotype. But that's a different story. Typing fast can take years of practice. But there are tricks to type faster and improve your skills. First, don't look at your keyboard. If you spend time looking for letters, that's less time typing. Second, type at a steady rate. That is, don't speed up or slow down. Find a pace that works for you. And lastly, type more often. Don't get discouraged if you aren't typing as fast as you want yet. Even Barbara nearly failed her first typing test. Just remember, practice makes perfect.